Representative Conlon, I apologize for the delay. Not a problem. Uh, thanks for joining us. You uh, are the last uh, person to join us to talk a little bit about H727. And I'm wondering if you could give us the, the big picture on it. Sure, let me just run through it section by section. It's 180 pages. Yeah, we know that it's 180 pages. All right, so eight by page. So very simply, uh, 727, most of 727 is uh, you know everybody here, Peter? Uh, uh, we have, I think, at least passed by in the hallway. Anyway, Peter Conlon, um, uh, House Committee on Education. Um, so 727 really, most of it is a rewrite of Chapter 11 of Title 16 and is really the work of the Agency of Education. Title 16 really covers the creation and organization of union school districts. Under that we put unified union school districts, union elementary school districts, union high school districts. <clears throat> so, you know, everything that, that everybody went through with Act 46, creating unified union school districts, it, it was all in chapter 11, but this reorganizes it, rewrites it, heck of a lot more detail, heck of a lot more specificity, so that in the future, if two towns or two districts are looking to merge, they can find their specific situation much more easily. Um, it's kind of a one-stop shop for everything you need to know. And, and it may seem a little counterintuitive, haven't we already done all of that through Act 46? But in fact, there's currently a merger study committee going on in Addison County between two districts that were form, formed under Act 46. Um, so it's not, not going to not happen in the future. And it really, this was a, an effort by, frankly, Donna Russo-Savage to take all of this, rewrite it, make it much easier to use for like a school board member or a citizen. Um, I'm sure we you that don't know, Donna Russo Savage used to be in Ledge Council when she was with Agency of Education, great attorney, and just really knows this work. Really well. Yeah, yes. Um, so when you go through it section by section um, with Ledge Council, uh, Beth can point out sort of the smaller areas of policy decisions that we made within that part. Um, they aren't terribly consequential. There are things like letting a union school district elect its clerk for three years rather than one year or appoint the person, um, same thing for a treasurer. So there's a lot of small policy decisions in there that we made. And then of course, the biggest section that generated the most discussion and was the biggest amount of work for the committee was the section on a town that seeks to withdraw from a unified union school district or from a union high school district or a union elementary school district. The, we were sort of threading a political needle with this for those who believe that um, the State Board of Education is the last best protection for children uh, attending school from adults who might make poor decisions and those who believe that you're never going to let an, a politically appointed group of so many people overturn the will of the voters. So the, just to, this is the part that sort of deserves more discussion. Um, current law basically allows a town to withdraw from a union school district. Uh, a self-selected group of people can go around and get the necessary signatures to petition for a vote in their community that wants to withdraw and all the other communities, do all of that, then go to the state board at the end of the process. And as long as they can show that their students have a school to go to, in other words, if they, are, if they were to close their school or couldn't pull off creating their school, can they go to a neighboring school? And if they can show that, which is a hard stretch, then the agency or the state board basically has to approve their withdrawal. We sort of took that process and, and reversed it a bit and said, you know, first of all, it should be more formal. That if we're gonna if we're gonna take the time to merge districts with a lot of thought and care, transparency and accountability, and involvement of the state board up front we should probably be doing the same for withdrawals or dissolutions of merged districts. So it takes that and says, okay, if you are a group of citizens who are seeking to withdraw your town, you gotta go out and get the signatures, but included in that, you're naming a group of three people to be a recognized public body to be the withdrawal study committee. Recognized public body, meaning that they have to have follow up a meeting law, and um, it's really about accountability, transparency, and providing as much information to the voters as possible. It also says that 
you know, you need to essentially do a lot of the upfront work and the work is spelled out. And it seems like it's a lot, but it's really nothing more than the state board would be asking for anyway at the end of the process. This is asking for it upfront, mainly with a goal of making sure that the voters have this information before they vote. So it essentially changes the order of things and says, okay, let's get all this information, get all this work done up front, get an idea of what the state board's going to do when the town gets before the state board before the voters vote, so they have this information. And of course, you know, one of the most important pieces of information is how is your withdrawing to town, if they are to continue operating a school, going to provide those services that we call supervisory union services, business management, curriculum development, and probably most importantly, providing special education. Um, and so it's basically saying, before you go to the voters, you gotta have a plan and you gotta make that plan public. And the state board gets to weigh in and they provide an advisory opinion so that the voters have all the information in front of them when they go to the polls, both in the withdrawing town and in those communities uh, that need to ratify that withdrawal. Uh, the other thing that we do is we essentially take out the state board's power to stop the process. They are in an advisory role only. Um, we felt that put it, making sure that all this work and information is provided up front was enough uh, to sort of satisfy that. Um, uh, and then so the state board issues an advisory opinion um, at, at the front end. The, um, the other parts within the withdrawal area, there are three carve outs for three districts that are have either been through the process or are in the middle of the process. These are Ripton, which has been all the way through. State board has approved there because they have really much of a choice under the law, approved with a lot of sort of cautionary notes, their withdrawal, uh, Stowe, which has um, voted in Stowe and then had their withdrawal ratified. And then Lincoln, same situation. Um, basically in those cases, they all they're need already to, in process. They're already in process. And, and they basically need to provide either their plan or a status report to the state okay. board. They're in the final part. All yeah, there. yeah. So two haven't been before the state board yet. One has already been to the state board. Uh, those are the only three? Yeah, those are okay. the only three that okay. um, have voted or they're in process. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there are others who have been through the complete process and are already sure. Um, sure. sort of. You represent Ripton, so you kind of have firsthand experience. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not only do I represent Ripton, I'm also on the school board that it withdrew from. Okay. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> but but uh, you know, but they before this came to us, they had already had their approval by the state board. And you had to use that firsthand experience. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so those are sort of the big things. In a nutshell, uh, and then you know you'll get a good you'll get a good education in um, essentially differences between all these various kinds of unified union school districts, union elementary school districts, union high school districts as you go through it. But like I said, the vast majority of this is rewrite of Chapter 11. It's existing law that is made much more user friendly. Great. Yeah. And I guess I will say, uh, I, I I've been sort of the lead on this in our committee. Um, I know it intimately, and if you ever have a question or want to know why we did something, just stop me, write me, whatever. I'm happy to discuss it. Really appreciate that, Senator. And was it brought by AOE, or is like yes. still the sponsored? No, it was. It so um, this was always uh, something that um, that's this is a great question because I wanted to point this out. Something that that the AOE has been working on, um, and this year with the field saying. Don't take, don't do any great new initiatives with the AOE saying, please don't do anything big and having two ledge councils assigned to education was figured now or never. <laughs> <laughs> and Ms. St. James thought, was hoping for never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, please, Senator Chinton. It all seems very reasonable. I don't know if yeah. this is an appropriate task, but what was the floor vote of out of the house? Uh, the floor vote out of the house. Uh, well, so our committee passed at 11 0. Uh, then we went to a roll call on the floor and you know this I, I can't explain why um, but a lot of it does have to do with sort of past simmering resentments over forced mergers or mergers that took place that people didn't want to be part of ultimately or fear of school closures 
So I think it was a, a 90 to 45 vote. Um, and, you know, you will hear uh, as you go through the testimony, uh, those communities that are concerned that, that this makes it too hard to, to leave. Um, uh -huh. Our philosophy all along has been basically asking for the same thing that's being asked for today, but in a different order with this with a special focus on accountability, transparency, and as much information to the voters as possible. Senator Chairman, Davis. just to follow up, Senator Chin, 90 to 45 out of the House sounds like a pretty partisan vote or typical partisan vote. Well, so it, it, in, all thing, the other? in all things Act 46, partisan has nothing to do with it. Yeah. It's, it's about yeah. your own local communities. Um, uh, sort of experience with that 46 almost yeah no i mean they were yeah i think a lot of it i can't explain no we may even start just having an overview again remind everybody what Act 46 mm -hmm. is and does etc yeah get a chance to look at our map get our yeah. chance to look at our map again yeah yeah, yeah. I'm going that. <laughs> that's really helpful yeah. thank you you're welcome any other questions for representative conlon Anything else? You no, no, but like I said, you know, it, there are there are some political decisions that, that you make through here. And if you ever want to know more about the debate we had, happy to help out. I think you'll probably get a lot of the same testimony uh, from from people testifying. Obviously. And the three times that you mentioned are in the process yeah, as yeah. it stands. So there. Yeah, there there are there is session law at the end of this that addresses them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and provides for a little bit more accountability, but, but basically they are the sort of free to move along if they so choose. But actually, one thing in those I will point out is we did give the state board one power, and that is with those three that are in process. If if their town decides we don't want to do this, um, they can hold a vote and say we're abandoning ship, and we gave the state power to essentially waive a void all the votes that took place and let them just sort of stay as is. The thought being that under current law, they'd have to go back and get voted back in by every single town in the union district. And you could see where they don't wanna be alone, but all it takes is one town, perhaps feeling a little bitter over what happened, voting no, and they'd be floating out of this, this world that um, they don't have a, don't have a home. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's my question. So I was pointing out that Khan is a former Peace Corps volunteer. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we have one on our committee. Yes, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. you were in the same country, but at different times. So. Oh, you were? Okay. Yeah, with my wife. With your wife. That's yes. great. Where were you? Paraguay. Okay. Yeah. And I'm eating. My wife was there. I was in town. Yeah. 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 There, there are a handful of us yeah. in the building. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Representative Collins. Thank really you very appreciate this, as yep. well as the offer to, to be helpful. Yeah, make yeah, really. Through it. I know you guys put a ton of time. You put through. a lot of time into yeah. it, and you know, uh, it's really important that this get through this year because yeah. of all the all the foundational work that's been done by the AOE on this. Yeah, yeah. great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, Miss St. James, we are not going to be able to go through, of course, the entire thing today. So, <laughs> uh, so I think what we'll do is we'll reschedule with you. How much time would you? Please, table? absolutely. I was hoping we could kind of game plan. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, how much time would you say we would, we would need? I was thinking about starting with having somebody come in. We have, uh, I'm back on this committee after a while. There's some new folks. Sort of a quick overview of Act 46. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you can help us identify the best person to do that. Just high level, 20 minutes. And then I thought maybe you could follow that person and take us through the bill. Sure. Um, and I was thinking maybe a Thursday. Sure. That would work I'm and I'm just wondering how much time might you need to, to give us a good overview. And that would give us time to just sort of at least skim it. So for ourselves. Act 46, um, not that this is my lane, yeah. but you could the, the attorney that I worked with at AOE is Donna Russo Savage, who also drafted Act 46. Yeah. Would you please have Donna come in? <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. Were you off thinking Donna or were you thinking no, you would? Donna. Yeah, so I'm okay, just saying. So Donna, um, Donna and I worked very, very closely on the House side to sure. get this where it is today. Great. Um, she was involved pretty much in every draft and everything Great. at the direction yeah, of the you House. Hear that? Mm -hmm. Donna Russo Savage uh, from AOE. Uh, and yeah. She's great. Um, so as far as how long it would take to present this, so um, I, I would 
suggest for your consideration the way the house handled this remember this is a committee bill so it came in chunks yeah but they handled it and they used the word chunks uh -huh. um so they handled the like big bill of the rewrite portion the kind of non-controversial reorganization detail added is one chunk okay and that took me about three days to get through in house going line by line mm -hmm. Oh, three God. days to present it <laughs> not three full days three days three, three in times. committee three times uh-huh um because it is the vast majority of the bill now i have been through this many many times now so i suspect that will be a lot faster okay um two days it's uh, sure two days um <laughs> but in all seriousness were you talking an hour wide? yes uh, and and i think i was in committee um an hour to an hour and a half each time uh, uh -huh. so um uh, it just depends on how detailed the committee wants to get in the walkthrough of, of what is the majority of it is current law. And then the, the next chunk that the House considered were the withdrawal sections, and that is new law. And then the third chunk was the session law to address the withdrawals underway. It's all you know, one bill. A, a Ripton, in. Stowe, Lincoln. There's also a, a fourth piece of session law that basically says, if you start and you hold one vote, but you haven't held all of them before this goes into effect, you got to start all over again under current law. The three towns or the three um, pieces of session law um, that this bill addresses are um, communities where the votes have all taken place. So there's actually four four pieces of session law, but the, the fourth one is, is essentially a page and a half. Um, so if you want to do, um, you want to look at it just linearly the withdrawal sections appear right in the middle of everything if you want to chunk them out we could do current law and then focus on the withdrawal and then the session law what do you think we should do you haven't done it i'm guessing the four chunks is what you I think see the Maybe. easiest to digest Cleanest, and the easiest, easiest to focus. So if we were, for example, to start with Donna Russo Savage, Daphne, I'm uh, looking to you on this also on Thursday for about a half hour on Act 46, mm -hmm. and then for you to come in and do the first chunk. Mm -hmm. And I'd say an hour. Sure. Uh, there's an outline with page, I mean, an outline with page numbers okay. annotated. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of go through the outline and then okay. I can stop and we can dive into the actual language when the committee wants to look at it. And I can provide kind of an overview of section by section. Um, so I'll ask Daphne to print out that first chunk that you sent to her so everybody has a copy of what you're talking about. That I added page line or uh, uh, line, uh, line numbers. numbers. Okay. The as passed by version doesn't have that. And with a bill this big, I felt it would be helpful. So that we could okay. say on line seven. Or so just so I know, and so Daphne is, what will you email her? The entire bill has passed or just one? So I've already emailed her the entire right. bill is passed, but then I can split it. I can split right. it up right. so that you've got the entire bill. And then we've got current law. I'm using air quotes here. Yeah, sure. Um, withdrawal and then session law. Okay. So you've got four pieces to work with and we can work with anyone at any time at your discretion. Great. So we'll start with the first chunk with current law this Thursday after we hear from Donna Russo Savage. Okay. And that sounds like the least controversial, mostly cleanup language. Sure. The um, I would suggest um, AOE provided a policy consideration document um, for the House. Okay. It's uh, several pages long, and they went um, and made their own policy considerations. I will annotate Great. where the House made those decisions, but you may want a clean copy from AOE for your own reference. So you can see the decisions they made um, and the places where they didn't take any further action. Um, just a suggestion. Don, I'm assuming Donna will make that suggestion as okay. well. Okay. How does that feel, everybody? Okay. And then we'll talk about the second chunk, et cetera, later in the week, probably Friday, and then we'll go into next sure. week a little bit. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, Daphne will work to schedule you uh, about an hour on the second, hour on the third, hour on the fourth. Sure. Does that work? Yep. Okay. Committee, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, St. James, if you don't mind sticking around for a few minutes, mm -hmm. just touch base. Tomorrow, just so everybody knows, we are jumping into uh, 
all of our uh, work on military families and uh, hoping to get a good sense of how to move that tomorrow. So uh, it'd be great to get that done since it's also, I don't think it's going to house that. I think it's going to uh, uh, military affairs in the house. So I'd love to just kind of move that as quickly as possible. Okay. Thank you.